All right, hey there guys. Uh, today we're gonna be learning about a couple of different things. One of them is how to use a ruler. Um, I hope that you guys have used a ruler at some point in the past, but we're just gonna refresh it really fast. And then also we're gonna talk about line segments and uh, lengths of line segments and stuff like that in geometry and how we refer to them and stuff like that. So grab your notes, turn to 1-2 if you haven't already, and Let's go, follow along, take notes with me. So the first thing we wanna talk about is on a ruler, some of the measurements and things like that. So um, on the top side here, we have inches. On the bottom side here, we have centimeters. Um, we're gonna start with focusing on inches. So um, within inches, you have it broken down into 16 pieces. We're gonna start with the largest dash in the middle. Hopefully we know that's one half since that's halfway from zero to one. Um, then we go to the next smallest increment, which would be quarters. So this one is one quarter, and this one here would be three quarters. And we're quickly going to run out of room here. Um, all right, so next uh, we go from halves to quarters to eighths. Eighths would be these next biggest ones. These are all eighths. And an easy way to count your eighths, um, if you've already got your quarters and your halves labeled, is to go one eighth, three eighths, five eighths, and seven eighths. So it goes one, three, five, seven, just the odd numbers. All right, and then the tiniest bit is the 16th. So we've got. The 16th, you can do the same kind of thing. That's the remaining uh, smallest ones. We can go 1 16th, 3 16th, 5 16th, um, 7 16th, 9 16th, 11 16th, 13 16th, and 15 16th. All right. So I know that's kind of crammed in there and tiny. Um, do your best. It's all right if it's, you know, um, not perfect there. Or, uh, as long as we know that those are 16. All right. So what we want to do then is use this to measure something. So we need to find something to measure. Um, if you flip to the next page. So with me, flip one page. So you get to 1.2 practice A. We're gonna practice measuring something and it says to the nearest eighth of an inch. So we're not gonna use the 16th on this particular one. We're just gonna use the nearest eighth of an inch. So we put our ruler. If you don't have a ruler, um, one will be passed out to you or you can get one from the front table. There'll be extra rulers out on the front table. Just make sure you return it. All right, um, let's see. So this one we've got, one inch here so it's more than one inch but it's less than two inches so we have one and looks like this is the quarter inch line um because it's the second biggest so one and one quarter is what that one looks like all right pause the video here try measuring the next one over see what you get then restart the video and see if you got it right all right hopefully you did that let's measure Let's see, it's more than two inches, but it's less than three. It's more than two and a half. It's this one right here, this eighth line. So that would be two and one, two, three, four, five eighths. So two and five eighths inches. You can put I, N dot for an inches abbreviation, or you can use uh, like a quotation mark. That would also be considered a measurement for inches. All right, so that's measuring. Um, go ahead and flip back to the previous page. And you can also measure in centimeters. Um, centimeters, if you flip your packet over, you can see right side up, or if you grab your ruler and you flip it over, you can see right side up. Um, so, Centimeters are broken out into 10 millimeters. So one centimeter is 10 millimeters. So if I wanted to measure something in centimeters, 
Uh, let me see if I have something else we can measure here in centimeters. Let's measure. Here we go. I have this cow. Let's measure the cow. We're just going to measure the space between the hooves the best we can. All right. He comes out to about here. which is two centimeters and six millimeters. So you could say this is 2.6 centimeters. You could say this is 26 millimeters. You could say this is two centimeters and six millimeters. There's lots of ways to express measurement um, in the metric system like that. So there we go. Um, that's measuring lengths of segments. Now, Let's turn our attention to the next section here, lengths of segment. So what does this all mean within geometry? A lot of times in geometry, you're going to get problems where they tell you a segment is a certain length, and then you have to do something with that length, or you have to know something about it. So the first word that we want to talk about when it comes to lengths of segments is this word congruent. In geometry, congruent is like equal, but for stuff. So you wouldn't say one line is equal to another line. You would say that they are congruent to each other. But what does that mean for two lines to be congruent? So for two segments, being congruent uh, is when two segments are the same length. All right, so when two segments are the same length, we call them congruent. And there's some different um, notation that we use to talk about congruent and stuff like that. Yes, I'm still here. Um, all right, sorry, uh, recording over Google Meet. Anyways, um, so some notation that goes with this congruence. Um, let's say we have this segment a, B, and let's say segment A, B is five centimeters. And so first off, when we refer to the length of a segment, um, we know that we name segments like this with like A, B with a little segment over the top. If I wanna talk about the length of segment A, B, I say A, B without the line segment over the top. This means length of line segment AB. So I can say AB equals five centimeters. And that would be notifying um, everyone the length of segment AB is five centimeters. We can also have another segment. Maybe we have segment cd over here that is also five centimeters that would mean that a b and c d are congruent to each other um so if the length of a b is equal to the length of c d then we can say segment a b is congruent to segment c d so this symbol means congruent. You're going to see it a lot in geometry this year. Congruent is like the equal symbol, but with a squiggle over the top. And it means equal, but for stuff. So if I'm talking about segments, I can say they're congruent. If I'm talking about measurements, I can say that they are equal. All right. So just some little geometry nuance that you'll pick up on more and more as we go through the topics. Um, the biggest thing that we want to talk about today is solving for length of segments. So if we keep going down a little further, um, the thing, the biggest thing we're going to talk about is this. Sometimes you'll see a problem that looks like this. They'll give you one big segment with two endpoints and a point somewhere in, the, in between. And they might put letters on there for the points, A, B, C. 
And then we might say that this part is five centimeters and this part is two centimeters. And you might be asked, what is the length of AC? All right, this is illustrating something really important called the segment addition postulate. So the segment addition postulate says if point B is between points A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. You're probably going, well, duh, but it's something that's important. The small part plus the small part equals the whole thing. So it illustrates AB, so that's this part, plus BC, this part, equals AC, the whole thing. Okay, well, if that's the case, then that means that since AB is 5 centimeters and BC is 2 centimeters, then 5 plus 2 is 7. So that tells us that AC is 7 centimeters. And sometimes you'll have units attached and sometimes you won't. Um, if you don't have units, don't put units. If you have units, feel free to include them. All right. So that's like the simplest version of this. If we level it up just a little bit, let's do another one. This time, we're going to set up another segment P, Q, R. And we're going to say that this part is four inches. And they're going to give us an overall measurement for PR of 15 inches. And we want to know what is PQ. All right, well, it's the same thing, but the other way around, right? Um, instead of adding, we're going to subtract because we know the whole thing is 15. We know the small part is 4. 15 minus 4 will give us this other part, right? So. For this one, it's simple enough. We can just set up 15 minus 4 equals 11. So PQ equals 11 inches. All right. So those are kind of the two um, easier versions of doing this. We can also bust out the algebra and bring some algebra into this. Your guys' favorite, right? Um, all right. But in order to make some room for this, we're going to have to find some room. Um, we're going to ignore this copying a segment stuff down here at the bottom. Um, and instead, right here, we're going to do a third example. Because sometimes the problem might be phrased a little bit differently, and it also might have a little bit different information that we have to decode. So for this one, we're going to write a sentence for our problem. Here we go. Q is between A and S. AQ is 3X and SQ is 2X plus 5 and um, let's see a s is 25 solve for x and a q and s q all right so that's a big loaded question, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with drawing the picture. Whenever you see something like this, something is between something and something, like Q is between A and S, we're going to draw a line segment with a point somewhere in between. It says Q is between A and S, so Q is going to go in the middle. A and S are going to go on the other sides. And then we get to label our picture from here. So AQ is 3X. So we're going to put over here on AQ, we're going to put a 3X. 
SQ is 2X plus 5. Here's SQ, and we're going to put a 2X plus 5 there. And then it says AS, the whole thing from A to S, is 25. All right. So there's, um, there's our picture of what's going on. Now what we want to do with our picture is we want to make an equation that we could use to solve for x. All right, so if we remember back up here, we had AB plus BC equals AC. It was small part plus small part equals whole thing. We're gonna do that same thing down here to make our equation. We're gonna go small part plus small part equals whole thing. We're gonna go 3x plus 2x plus five, so there's our small part, plus our other small part, equals the whole thing. And now all we have to do is solve for x. So solving for x here, 3x plus 2x is 5x. So we have 5x plus 5 equals 25. Then we're going to subtract 5 from both sides, because then that goes away. And we are left with 5x equals, because that's all that's left over here, 25 minus 5 is 20. And then lastly, we divide by 5 on both sides, so we get x equals 4. So that's part of our answer. We wanted to solve for x. Then the second thing we want to do is figure out what aq and sq are. So to do that, now that we have x, we're going to take it and plug it back in all the way up here. So we know that AQ was 3X. We're running out of room. Um, let me do that up here. AQ equals 3X, which is now 3 times 4 because 4 was X. So AQ is 12. That's going to be part of our answer. We also want to know what SQ is. Now to find SQ, there's two things you could do. The first thing you could do is you could absolutely plug 4 in here for x and solve. The other thing that you could do is we know that this is 25. We now know that this is 12. Well, it just becomes like this one, right? We did big one minus little one. Big one minus little one, 25 minus 12. So you could do that if you wanted to as well. Either way is fine. If you want to practice plugging things in, we can go sq equals 2x plus 5. So in this case, it's 2 times 4 plus 5, which is 8 plus 5, which is 13. So SQ is 13. All right. That's everything that's new. Uh, let's take a look at our assignment so we can practice this. So our assignment for today is brought to you by IXL the letter B and the number five, because it is IXL section B5. All right, so this is IXL B5. You can find the link to this in your Google Classroom, um, like right underneath this video assignment. So IXL B5, we're hoping to get a smart score of 80. So starts off simple. It shows you KL and LM, and it wants to know what is KM, the whole thing. So we just add these two things together, 11 plus 12, which gives us 23, enter. All right, and it keeps going like this for a little bit. Eventually, it'll start offering you questions like this, like the, the last one that we just did, where you get to add up 2x plus x plus 7. Um, ooh, I can use a marker. 2x would be that part, plus, goodness, this thing writes bad, or I write bad, x plus 7, and then equals the whole thing, which was 10. So then you continue solving this now. You go, um, let's see, they want to know what is uv. So don't forget, once you solve for x, you have to plug back in your answer to the uv one right here. All right, so then we get 3x plus 7 equals 10. 
and then we subtract seven from both sides. Goodness, we get three X equals three. And then we divide by three on both sides and we get X equals one. And then since X is one, UV is X plus seven. So one plus seven, which is eight. All right, so then you'll keep going with these. Um, if you need help with one, there's always this thing up here that says video. You can watch a video, it'll show you an example. Um, you can do, I think there's a learn with an example option back at the very beginning that I skipped. So you can always do a learn with an example. Um, and then if you have questions, don't forget to ask tomorrow. Also, don't forget to log into IXL, otherwise it'll lose your progress, which would be super sad. All right. Have a great day, guys. Um, see you tomorrow.